Hello and welcome to the ninth in a set of tutorials for XFX Toolkit version 2, now with added object tracking. If you haven't got the plugin pack installed, please follow the link below. We're going to move on to the simulation effects inside the pack and take a quick look at the fader transitions as well. I've already added a few clips onto the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline and hopefully those will show off each one of the effects. So let's start with this helicopter shot of the uh, port and drop on tilt shift. And you'll find that in the effects browser under 90, they're all labeled with 90 to make life easier. Drop that on. And as you can see, that gives us the, the feeling that we're looking at a model, a very popular technique used at the moment. And these on-screen controls control where the gradient starts and finishes. So I can actually drag this back to say that I want to move the area of focus or defocus and play that and it gives you the simulation that you're actually looking at a model very popular look at the moment um, also with the on-screen controls I've got those they're replicated in the inspector but I've also got a master blur here if you pump it right up you can see where the two effects end to get the effect just right for that for that look. And it doesn't have to be a straight kind of letterbox in the middle. You can actually adjust these as well to do a diagonal blur, should you wish. Onto the airport, and I'm going to drop the security camera effect on there. And we get that look as if we're looking through a CCTV security camera. We've got a bit of a strobe, some scan lines, which tinted, and obviously we've got the overlays as well. Lots of controls in the inspector. Um, you can put the date and time in or up here on the top right. You can put the camera name on there. You can move this around should you wish to. Um, also things like uh, we've got the strobe, so you can take that off. Everything seems to be customizable in here. A lot of controls for a different look. You can have a bit more fisheye should you wish. And alter the scan lines on there. So that's a really flexible plugin to get you that kind of CCTV camera look in one go. A great look with just one click. Onto the thermal imager and that replicates the look of a thermal imaging camera and as we can see we've got different levels, different colours assigned to the different luminance levels on there. Only a few controls in the inspector. We can map them to the red, green, blue or alpha, the colours, or we can do an offset, which is quite a funky effect, to swing everything to get the colours right, so you to get the reds on something that you would think would be warm. Onto the rainy street, and I've used this because it's got the lights, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the lens doubler on here, which you might have seen. It's a very popular effect that lots of camera guys like to do. They like to flick the doubler in on a lens, and it gives you this type of effect where you get a kind of like a bigger ghosting image on there. And we've got loads of controls as per normal, so we can scale the second image, pull it down, we can adjust the original, and also push up the blur because normally it's out of focus on there. It kind of gives you that dreamy look and you've probably seen it quite a few times. It's actually generated in camera and this effect tries to emulate that. On to this video of a lady pulling a pint. It kind of makes me thirsty, but there you go. What we're going to do is make it a bit more glamorous by using the glow stars and they go on there. Now obviously that out of the box is too much. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull the threshold down and you can see we get those highlights, those cross highlights, the stars on all the big luminance values in there. So it's great for doing something like show business or award shows where you can drop that on. Uh, things where there's quite a few lights, you see it's kind of like looking nice down here. Again, loads of controls, the blend mode, the opacity, um, and I, I can also rotate the stars as well should you want to do that. And we've got some blur and smoothness. We can also tint the stars as well. So let's pick a colour. Let's make it beer colour. There we go. Beer colour, rotating stars on there with glow stars. On to glow edges. And if I drop glow edges onto the shot of the helicopter, you can see it's instantly picked out the edges around that helicopter. And I've got a few controls in here. I can actually adjust the intensity, the radius of the glow, and the opacity. Quite good for actually putting around graphics and things like that. 
Next up is Make Alpha, and if I drop that onto the shot of the street, you can see you know, it looks a bit funny at the moment, but if I go and hit Invert Mask, you can see what it's done. It's actually starting to knock out the alpha of the luminance signal. So in, you know, if you want to replace a sky and it's just blown out white, apply this and you can put something underneath it. And finally, on to the fader transitions, which you'll find in the title inspector. They're all labelled hundreds, and obviously they're in the XFX toolkit. Now, once you've got the hang of one, you'll understand the other three. So I've got three shots down here on the timeline, and what I'll do is I'll drag long fade out onto the top. It's a bit longer than I need, so I'll just reduce that to the end of the clip, of the third clip. Now, by watching the waveform level and also the viewer, when I play, what it does, it ramps the luminance down over the period of that fade out. You don't have to make a compound clip, it just goes from 100% to zero over the duration as long as you've got this stretched out. Doesn't matter how many shots you've got, anything that's under the title will fade down. In the next video, we'll be looking at the plugins that fix things in Final Cut Pro 10.